Yeah, so here we have uh, Dan, the president of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. Um, can you tell us uh, why do you have this meeting about uh, plastic in ocean? We know that plastic pollution globally is an enormous problem for humankind and for our environments. And um, most of the plastics eventually end up in the oceans and we need to do something about that. Of course, one thing is to make people aware of this so they use less plastic, but we already have more than enough in the oceans and uh, what we will be talking about is what we can do about that. If there is a way to degrade the plastics to get rid of them. But uh, the ocean is uh, quite big, and uh, so you think now there is uh, such an urgency. How serious is that? Well, we're pouring uh, millions of tons of plastics into the oceans, so the problem is rapidly getting worse. Uh, so we need to start thinking now about how to reduce this. And of course it will be a, a major challenge to find a way to degrade the plastics that are already in the oceans. And we are hoping that we, in some way we will be able to use microorganisms for that purpose. And this is what we will be discussing at this symposium. So this meeting is more in a sort of scientific way, a deep uh, discussion about uh, uh, plastic and uh, its uh, uh, toxicity or hazardous. We're discussing various aspects. Uh, toxicity is one important thing to uh, be aware of, so we know how big the problem is. And then, of course, to bring together scientists from different fields to see what solutions we can find to these challenges. And, uh, but I heard that it's uh, quite good that people think of uh, uh, popularize this issue and uh, make people aware and then do more uh, basic like uh, recycling, right? Exactly. Information to the general public is crucial for this. And I think we have several successful examples of increased awareness in the population about these challenges. There have been regulations introduced in different places to ban completely the use of plastic bags, straws for beverages and other plastic uh, uh, utensils like uh, uh, cutlery in plastics is also banned in some places. And I think that will have to be the way to go, as long as we can find better replacements for these plastic products. Mm -hmm. And today is only the first day, and we are looking forward to tomorrow. What, what do we expect tomorrow? Tomorrow we will discuss and speculate about possible solutions to the problem. And what I'm particularly excited about is the possibility to use microorganisms and perhaps tailor-make enzymes that can be used to degrade the plastics. It's not going to be easy. We probably don't have the solutions in, in the near future, but in the long run we need to find ways to uh, reduce the plastics that are, is already in the environment. As a, someone of the speakers uh, pointed out today, since plastics are organic materials, there have to be ways to degrade those organic compounds. We only need to find the right way to do it, and that's going to be a real challenge, but I'm quite optimistic. We have to do it. Will this field also lead to, sort of, a, or, or belong to the Nobel Prize in chemistry? Well, I'm not supposed to speculate about that, um, but um, um, let me just say that we had a, a wonderful Nobel Prize only six months ago uh, to uh, uh, the scientist who um, developed a method to make enzymes more efficient. And I think that her uh, procedure, this is Francis Arnold from the United States, her procedure can probably be used to improve enzymes also for degradation of plastics. So in a way we can rely upon a Nobel Prize already awarded. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. My pleasure.